All right, let's welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to go through quickly why I use both a Wacom sketch tablet and my mouse while I do my edits. And maybe it'll be a way that you would want to do it too. Right, let's get into it. Now first is the difference between the two. Uh, the Wacom uses this pen stylus tool and this sketch tablet. Job done. A couple of programmable buttons. Nothing too extreme, it's a fairly basic version. I even just got the wired version. And then regular mouse. Those are the things I use to do my edits. That's really it. Now, why would you use a sketch tablet? Why would you bother getting one? For me, it is the feeling of being more in control of my brush strokes, basically. Mainly when I'm doing shadows and highlights or erasing backgrounds off players, like I showed you in the previous video of how I do that. I like to use layer masks and a black and white brush. Using the Wacom, it gives me a lot more control on it than what using a mouse would because I feel like a mouse I move a lot from the wrist where with a tablet it's a lot more of a sketchy motion whereas originally I would have done a lot of sketching back in the day so it's a lot more natural to me than using a mouse. Also like mentioned it has a couple of shortcut keys on the top that you can program to whatever you want and a couple of click keys on the pen for like right click left click of the mouse and you can double tap or hold on it and it does all the things a mouse does very handy. But I will say it is not great as soon as I go outside the sketching sphere. I don't like how it works. Sometimes it does things a bit off for me and that's when I go back to using the mouse. So if I use the pen tool for something in particular or if I'm doing Illustrator and everything's being used with vectors and I have to use the pen tool there to do cars and stuff, then I will go back to the mouse because it is more precise and it is, it just feels a lot better doing particular things like that. But the downfall of the mouse, as I said, it's very clunky and it just doesn't feel right when you're trying to do regular sketching because you get to use the natural pen of the Wacom instead. So when you're trying to use a mouse, it just doesn't feel right. Now it can do the same job and if you're used to it, of course, use away. Don't invest in a Wacom. But for me, I bought it about a year ago and I've been using it nearly every day since. And it has been a fantastic investment because it gives you a lot more control. It has pressure sensor going through, which the mouse just does not have. So basically what that means is you can vary the stroke weight as you go along. But with a mouse, that's impossible because it can't tell what pressure you are putting on anything because it is literally either you've clicked the button or you haven't. Both of them are very easy to use and that's why I interchange them throughout my designs and that's how I get my designs is that I use both of them for because they each have their particular task in my head. So if you feel like you're really comfortable using the mouse with some things, keep using the mouse with those things. If you feel like you are more used to sketching and drawing and then maybe you might become even better at making backgrounds and other things like that, get a sketch tablet. They're less than 80 quid I think. I got a wired one as I mentioned. If I was to advise anyone I'd get a wireless one because I just think wireless stuff is just a lot more cleaner because at the moment my desk is an absolute mess because I have this wired microphone. I have the Wacom here. I have another microphone that I use for gaming. There's wired headphones here. Just wires everywhere. So anything wireless that you can get I would advise in getting like my mouse. But if you can get a wired one and keep it nice and neat unlike myself then get the wired one. They do the same thing. Obviously just one's just wireless, the other isn't. If you like what I'm saying in the video, of course this one is mainly just opinion and explaining what I use to do my drawings, sketches, posters, whatever they are. Subscribe to the channel for more sports craft design stuff and where I'll give hints and tips on stuff and bring you through the journey of me starting on my own business in a freelance graphic designer and go through how I create my piece of artwork. There'll be rugby rebrands or just regular sport rebrands of clubs. Uh, how to make social media posts, uh, how to use Instagram, which is all self-experience. I'm not pretending I know Instagram's code. But if you want to know any of that or anything like it, subscribe to the channel, comment down below what you'd like to see, and of course like the video because it helps out teeny tiny channels like my own. But anyway, back to the video. So after me explaining to you the two differences between the two, uh, well, not really differences, but why I use either of them, they do both do essentially the same thing. So it is up to you to what to use. If you want to do more freehand stuff, I suggest getting the Wacom. I will leave a link in the description. Unfortunately, since I uh, get about 30 views a video, no one will be sponsoring this, but if you want to have a look at what the Wacom is, I'll leave a link down below and I'll leave a link down to my mouse as well. 
sure, look, can't hurt. But as I mentioned, I think the Wacom is great for doing shadows and highlights because it lets you control those natural curves a bit better than what a mouse does. And the mouse is then better for things like the pen tool where you just need to feel a bit more in control, which I don't really feel with in the sketch. But it's kind of hypocritical because I said a few more in control of curves and stuff with the Wacom pen and not with the mouse. Hard one to call, but it is up to you. Try them out if you can. If your mate has one, get a loan of it. Just see what it's like or buy one yourself. I'm not your boss, you can do what you want with the money. But we'll go to a new part of my videos that I'm gonna put in the end. It's where I'll go to my hashtag TSC review and I will be bringing up my favorite artwork of the week, basically. If you have artworks of your own sports graphic design, put it on hashtag TSC review so I can see it. I'll be picking one every video that I remember to put it in. So uh, yeah, let's have a look. Okay, so 100% my favorite that I can see to today that I haven't brought up before is this one by WTNDXN. You've been on the page before, but this is a brilliant piece of artwork. You have used the colors very well, obviously to do with him, but also the fact that I think of the color green when I think of Greece and not blue is kind of weird. I know blue's on the fly, but I think green because I always think of the soccer team that I can't pronounce, but it has the shamrock on it. It's a fantastic little piece and you've got a nice little accent of gold and the player is done really well, really good details. You've cut out the hair really well. All in all, a great picture. So go check him out. I'll leave the link to his page down below. All right, lads, that's the end of the video. If you liked what I did here today, as I said, you can subscribe to the channel. I will put more stuff out like this. I will put uh, rebrands of sport clubs, as I said. There'll be design challenges coming soon and just other stuff related to sports graphic design and Instagram and stuff that I kind of know. And also, I've just released my own website called tscgraphics.com. So go check that out. You will see some prints for sale. Do not feel obliged to buy one, but if you do, that would be great to help support me and it is also a way to get in contact with me if you want to get in touch for freelance work on in relation to any sports graphic design or graphic design needs if you like the style of my work so all right if you have time go check that out if not good luck have a good time